just going to get set up really fast. We do a quick blessing for you guys. Sorry, it's been a crazy week. I don't know if you guys care what the background looks like. I'm not going to. I should have cleaned up first. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing all right. This video will freaking out. What's going on here? You need to shut your mouth. Cat. Alright, get a drink and then we'll get started. See if anybody else shows up here. Been or not, but what's going on, guys? Let me. All right, dog. You want to say hi? Come on. He's on a lot there. Okay. So the last two, three weeks, we've been working on uh, just like random form details and things like that. So I wanted to do was go into some practices uh, that I hope will speed up or correct some of the. The misunderstandings of like what happens inside your body because I mean like you know fundamentally they're all the same, but uh, the way you get to the place is different. And then there's also some other things about how do you, when you actually have to fight people, you have to actually use force. And there's a lot of these problems with the translations and what force is, you know. And, and they say they say to not use force. What they're meaning is to not meet resistance with resistance. To not use force or not use effort is the most asinine thing. It just, it, the whole world is full of delusion right now, guys. So everybody, you, you guys get it, okay? You guys get it. So, oh, God. I'm extremely sore, by the way. I'm freaking trying to get rid of five years of being a fucking slop ass. So, you have to bear with me while I get back in shape, guys. Okay. So, first thing of the business, we're going to talk about the... The internal structure and how to get it and what it is. So you have the expansion contraction flexion. It's different than extension uh, flexion, right? So you know a, a lot of the issues that people are, are getting is that you, you're using the type one muscles first, using flexors instead of other tonic and postural muscles. Okay, fine. But what is this extension reflex shit and how do we get it and how do we get it fast? How do we actually figure out a way to train this reflex in a very easy way? So there's a couple little, uh, little ideas that, you know, because again, I, I've trained so many, I can't even tell you where I get some of these things from anymore because 30 years of training in so many styles and like, you know, I, and there's some things that I, you know, I, I, I'm not even sure where the exercise came from at this point. You know, but I'm just putting it all back together and we give it to you. All right. So first things first is the setting the scapula. Before we even get there, I said this before in the videos, when you're in your gestation, you're actually unfolding from your heart, right? So the space, what I call this the thoracic lumbar junction, right, where the, the, the thoracic spine and the, and the lumbar spine kind of meet, right? Just above that, behind your heart. From that space, I want to stretch in both directions as far as I can. So. You'll hear people talk about connecting to the North Star, the crown, the open spot in your head. I don't want to just connect to the North Star. What I want to happen is I want the vertebrae of my spine to traction in both directions from that heart space and create a little void in the middle. You ask me why. Why is it, okay. When they say power is found uh, uh, a bow being shot from the arrow, right? Uh, let's try this. This might work. Okay, let's just say this is my spine. And attached to my spine or my interior muscles and my posterior muscles, right? So the axial skeleton, you could basically think of like the axle of the car and there's two wheels on the side. Turn this this way, and now you have your shoulders and you have your hips, okay? So this is your spine, this is the axial skeleton, okay? On one side, we have muscles attaching from the back to the front and then from the front to the back, great. So how do we get this uh, bow effect, okay? 
first thing we're going to do is we're supposed to come and we used to do this in physical therapy situations. Um, people have ring scapula, things like that. First thing is to set the scapula. I've gone this last time. I want to see if I'm doing correct because I can't see. But my normal standing posture, shoulders back, down, right? You see that my scapulas are pinched in. Okay? Um, I think my shirt off now. Okay, so now what I want to be able to do is not just turn on my back. I need to first extend my shoulder joints out. Okay? So before I do any of that, I need to start a stretch from here this way. Then I need to start a stretch from here this way. Okay? So before we set that, we set the scapula. How do we properly set the scapula? So I'm going to show you this right now, okay? So we go into a basic plank position. Uh, can you see me? Let me just turn this a little bit. Okay, so you're going to your basic plank position. Let's see if I can get it. So I'm going to start doing the live streams, by the way, on my real stream computer so you'll have a full view. This is what I got right now, guys. Okay. Can you see me? So when you go into a plank, you want to have your middle finger, elbow, rotating, okay, fine. Put your hands down, and you want to push through out, okay, clockwise, counterclockwise. And what you'll notice is that my elbow is going to turn this way. It's very important, okay? You have to hide the elbow in Tai Chi. It's very important. Same thing with weightlifting. It's all about biomechanical advantage. But in Tai Chi, you know, trapping range, you don't want your fucking elbow broken. So you always want to have the elbow hitting you down whenever possible. Okay, fine. We got that problem. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into a plank. If you're too weak to do a plank, just do it on your knees. It's not about the, the workout here. First, what we're trying to do is find the straight line, crown path through the bone marrow in your hand. Okay? So we're going to do that same stretch where I'm stretching my head and my ass in two directions. And now I'm going to press out this way, okay? And what you're going to notice is that as you wind up in the same posture, my back is flat. Okay? Now I'm going to do a scapula push-up or push-up plus. What I'm going to do is I'm going to concave my shoulders and I'm going to roll them all the way out. Okay? I'm going to concave my shoulders and I'm going to roll them all the way out. You can do this on your knees. You can do it on a wall if you're too weak. Okay? But the idea is I want to see, and I want to see this. I'll go from the back. Okay, so over here, I want to see this. Okay, do it from the front, from over here, here's my normal set, here's my push-up plus, all the way out, all the way out. Okay? Good. So you want to do it a couple times until you get that feeling of posting through the bone marrow while stretching in the two directions. Okay? So now when you got that, what I'm going to do is going to help you to put your scapulas flush, to base them down and spread it out to give you that turtle shell back we're talking about, okay? So now we have the turtle shell back thing. Okay, come back up, push your arms. You're gonna push your elbows out to the sides. And now we're gonna try to like, if we're doing double elbow, if we're gonna rip something in half, I'm not trying to go backwards, I'm trying to take the point of my elbow and push it all the way through the wall, okay? Proprioception is dictated by distal points. This is a philosophy I came up with about 15 years ago when I was teaching drugs. Your body's awareness of space is dictated by the farthest point of your awareness. So when I teach, I always try to teach the tip of the finger, the tip of the knuckle, wherever there's a hinge with a synovial fluid, there's a, a gap that your consciousness can leak through. That's what you want to be aiming at. So what I want to do is take my elbows and now I'm going to do the same thing to push a plus. I'm not going to go back, I'm going to go out. And when I feel that spread, now I'm going to do the same thing with my fingertips. I'm going to go out. Okay? And if you notice, inside the joint capsule, I'm creating space. Okay? So this is some hidden shit that most, I would say 99% of the Tai Chi people don't got. You'll see some of the very high level people talk about this expansion reflex. They're not going to explain to you how to explain it to you. Okay, this is a, it's a very specific way of using force to understand the no-force concept, which doesn't exist. So, okay, so we have a push-up plus, we have the scapula, okay? Now we have our lateral extension, getting the uh, AC joints, all this crap inside to open up this one. Okay, fine. Now we're going to do that, cross the arms again. The elbows down. Bring the elbows in a roll, and then 
push them out into the push-up plus. And when you do this, you should feel almost like a very strange opening here that you're not used to feeling. <laughs> okay? So it's a roll and a push. Okay? And remember, the only thing we're doing here is stretching and training the mind to create the outside of distal point as a point of reference. Okay? And what's happening here is if I had rubber band on the strip, let's just say the anterior section is here, right? When you compress me, because I'm already stretched out, all these tendons, they're taut. So it's like taking a, a, a rope and tying it really, really tight for two points. You can walk on it, right? You can even jump on it sometimes, depending on the, on the what's, what's the freaking word? Elasticity of, of, the, of the rope, right? So you can actually walk on these things. Same thing you do to your body. This is why it's so dangerous. You can't tell how strong somebody really is, what kind of power they're going to put into you. Okay? Because even when I was broken, out of shape, fat, skinny, broken, sick, shitting, throwing up blood, I can still put my finger through your body. <laughs> okay? And I know that sounds fucked up, but it's the truth. <laughs> okay? So, we've gotten the push up plus, we've gotten the extension. Okay, we're going to cross again, we're going to do the lift and out. Do the same thing, out. Okay? So now we have the basic four directions, okay? That you can be fighting with. For health purposes, and this is a, one of the reasons I got this from a, a mantis, the famous mantis Tai Chi master in China. Um, what he was saying is that it's not good to compress it, it has to be a part of the form where you open the joints and unroot. So, in the apparent closing, or the first short half of the form, if you notice that when I do the closing, I don't do the closing in this height. Okay? There's a reason for that. We've apparently ended the form, right? So I have to apparently decompress. Okay? So if I'm here, oh, I'm gonna fucking wait. Fine. So go to here. Now what I want to do is completely decompress. And then settle again, because now I'm reopening the form. Okay? I hope this makes sense. The reason why I brought that up at this point because a very important exercise to be able to do an overhead lift. Okay? Why is this important? Because it's something you never do. Are you going to punch somebody in the sky? No. However, what it's going to do to the, it, it affects your interior and posterior chain equally when you do a stretch this way. The other problem that people are going to have is that a lot of the lateral uh, flexors, extensors, uh, the uh, intercontinental, uh, what the fuck's name is, I'm so tired. But your QL is the number one problem. Okay, QL and so on, right? I just might as well teach you the So a good QL stretch position is do kind of like a sumo squat position, right? And I just do this, just like this, okay? Now, whenever you're doing any kind of deadlift, back stretch, anything like that, Tension the back of the head, lift the neck, and then roll your spine up. Okay? Don't curve your back and then put pressure and then try to roll from here up. Okay? Very bad. I just cut my back, right? Okay. So what we're gonna do is as long as I can get it, okay, and maintain that. If I, as long as long as I can go, I'm maintaining a semi-flat back. But again, I'm not stretching down. I am stretching out. Okay? So this is the first one. 30 seconds. Come back up. Uh, okay? Then you're going to do side to side on the knee. And you should feel a lot of you guys who don't do any kind of mobility work, you might have problems getting to here. <laughs> you're sitting all day. You're going to have some problems. So you want... To get that QL nice and stretched out, fine. Again, notice that when I do the lift, I soften my head. Because I want to create tension in the thoracic spine to counterbalance the tension in my lumbar spine, okay? I don't want to be lifting from here. I want to tension this up to allow me to get access to acetabular the rotation of my hip, okay? Here, fine, I'm doing it fast as for me, okay? Obviously, hold each side for like 30 seconds, okay? As you get that, I like to do it like this. Call it prisoner squat style. I take my elbow and put it to my leg. And what's it gonna do to get all these suckers? You're gonna be really surprised <laughs> how much more power you have by stretching these, uh, these forgotten muscles. And 
And the reason why foam rolling and uh, trigger point therapy is so important, <sighs> nobody here watch this. It's like this. If I have a rope or a string, and the string has a loop in it, okay? Before I can apply energy by pulling the string, what happens? Right? Then, even when it's knotted, that energy is still getting stuck in here. So it's a loss of transfer. So, Basha, not exactly not like that. What they'll do, how was that? Welcome to the live. Uh, okay, whatever. Well. Anyway, so what they'll do is they cross, and then the mic starts to take this off. Uh, it looks like white cotton candy. Because in between the muscle tissue, the fascial there. And this is why all animals in the world stretch when they wake up. Because you have this, like, it literally looks like, 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 like a mixture between spider webs and cotton candy. That's in between all of your muscle tissue. So you need to get that. These lateral flexing is, 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 is like, most people don't realize that these muscles actually do work this way because they're dealing with the counterbalance and counterforces and rotation of the hip. So it's really important to get that QL thing going. Next lift is that we have to get the hip. So I've said this before, I don't, for a practice, just to get the feeling, you're gonna put your weight down flat, you're gonna spread the floor, you're trying to rip the floor in half. And you should feel your glutes turn on immediately. Okay, so can you see my feet? Yeah. So I imagine a piece of paper on the floor. I do this for all my clients, all my students, especially with weightlifting. First thing I do, I set them up. It's up whatever the foot position is, then come spread the floor. Because it activates the glutes, as well as the cranial valves, gets you all set up for a structure of integrity. Okay, great. So now that we got that down, and you got this feeling, now we're gonna do the hips and the shoulders together. So we're gonna spread the hips, spread the shoulders. Relax. Spread the hips, spread the shoulders. Okay, good. Now from here, spread the hips, spread the shoulder, put the head and the tail up. So the tailbone goes down, head goes up, and it feels like my neck is being traction. And this seems like, how the hell is that possible? Because you only have flexing and extending muscles, right? So one does this, one does this. How the fuck am I getting this? How? What muscles control extension? And I was in medical school for two years, all right, working in the gross anatomy lab, and all the fucking, I, I, I've seen everything, okay? <laughs> and then I was went to four years of school for that. I see no harm in this shit. I've never seen anyone explain that to me. Well, how is it that I get space in between my joints and can cavitate them, but from the inside? How can you decompress my joints from the inside? It's only flexion extension, huh? So, does it matter? No, just make it happen. <laughs> There's something there that makes it happen, right? Is it a combination of both the flexion extension working? Is there a release of some kind of tendons here? Is this, I, don't, I don't know. But I can feel it, I can show it to you, <laughs> okay? Because I can, I, you know what? If you were to go in a pull-up bar and hang for 30 seconds to a minute, you'll notice you get an inch tall. This is everybody. Because, you know, buoyancy, force, gravity, whatever you want to call it, is compressing you constantly, right? Then you're sitting down, you're compressed, and you're carrying something, you're compressed, you're compressed. You're doing Tai Chi, what are you doing? You're compressing, right? You're doing pushing, what are you doing? You're compressing, 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 over and over again. So you need to learn this decompression, right, which is the expansion flex. Okay. I don't know who actually showed up. I can't see if anybody even here, but they'll get in the way. All right, so we got push-up plus shoulders, right? We have all directions to expand the shoulders, directions to expand the joints of the fingertips, hips. Okay, roll that down. Good review, great. Good talk, class. Okay, so next thing is, you know, if you're gonna be arguing about this, I don't care, <laughs> okay? So, Tai Chi was, we look from some what comes from uh, five S's eight more, right? But specifically, they say it's white crane and snake. Okay, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. In, in my opinion, the grand ultimate is the universal style that has everything in it. And if you go far enough back and pay attention, every animal is in a Tai Chi form. <laughs> so I don't want to hear this shit anymore. Okay, so. The reason I'm saying this now, I'm going to show you a version of preparing to learn a vibrating palm type thing. And I'm not going to go into all the details that I was asked after, and I'm going to respect that, but I'm going to show you what's publicly accessible or, or, or allowed. <laughs> okay? So, I'm not even going to use the phone. Okay. 
when you do, uh, you'll see different versions of like cream form, right? You know, this is like this, whatever, right? Okay, fine. There's different reflexes that people are using when they're getting the vibrating palm, or they're doing all the different, some people have a side, side motion, some people have a up and down motion, some people vibrate, some people waxing. What I'm going to show you right now is, is a pumping, okay? So, what you do is you're not trying to tense up and grab, or we're just going to push our fingers all the way out, and we're going to push as far as they can until they start to shake. Okay, fine. Hold that, then release the stretch. Do it again. Now, I'm not wiggling my hands, okay? I'm just pushing as hard as I can out, and that's creating this reflex, okay? It's most likely the, the GTO reflex freaking the fuck out, okay? But who knows? Point is, this is what happens. Now we got this, this happening. What to do is drop the palm and press from the hollow of your palm. Imagine that you're holding, a, I don't know, a, a coin or a, something, something you have in your house, okay? That would fit the circle of your hand, okay? I'm trying to get a shadow so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so you can see this place. This is where this whole hole, okay? That's what I'm working with. I want to create this tile palm idea, but I'm going to open this way. And again, stretching the palm this way and stretching your palm this way, opening all the tendons and the hinges. Now you can say, oh, that's a hard style for training. Yes, it's a hard style of training. Why? Because you need something to measure. Okay? You need a measurement. So you need to know what you're feeling, what you're dealing with. This is how you can take something that will take you 10 to 20 years and learn it in one. <laughs> okay? You have to increase the measurement scale so your brain can deal with it, your body can, the mechanics have to focus on you and understand what's happening to you. Okay? <clears throat> but this is the same power that I find in, in my classical karate, I find in, in from my, my Tai Chi teachers. When you get hit, this is the reflex that happens. It's, it's inside from the bone marrow and it's inside so all the components i've explained to you before all happen at one point okay so when you practice this expansion reflex you can do as hard as you can notice i'm not tensing up my muscles here okay i'm expanding to the point where see this is using my tricep you see difference i'm just expanding the reason why you'll see some stridation because I'm open, <laughs> so if I'm stretched, <laughs> okay, you're gonna see something. But it's not the same as me flexing, okay? This is just me stretched, this is me flexing. It's a big difference, <laughs> okay? So I'm just trying, open this, push this, make sure everything in all directions is stretching at the same time. And just hold that a couple seconds here and there. How you apply this practice to your method, it's not my problem, okay? So, When I'm going through the form, generally I'll, and even when I teach, I, I go by three, no, three. So I'll try to find three topics or a concept or ideas I'm going to work on that day in the form. Okay? So for instance, like uh, I've had a little injury in my left side, right? So I'm really working now on realigning the, the long head of my hamstring and getting my hip back underneath my leg. Because three years of being forced isolation, locked in a room for half the fucking time, jacked my body up. Okay? So that's why I work on it. <laughs> but, you know, some days I'll be working on uh, spiraling. Some days I'll be working on brushing. Some days I'll be working on, you know, this kind of internal power generation. Some days I'll be working on, on finding snap power. Pick three ideas, or pick one idea, and work on that. Okay? So, how do you apply what I showed you to the form? So let's just say we're doing first step, right? When I think of the form, the first thing I'm thinking of is, before I do anything, I start my stretch, I feel my feet in the ground, and when I tell you, it's literally like, if I was to pick up a piece of paper, that's the amount of force I'm using to spread the form. When you teach it, I want you to use all your force. 
Why? Because it's a bigger measure when you understand what's happening. Okay? So you start off with moves like this, and they end up like this. Okay? So, first thing is first. Say I'm doing it the, the normal way. Before I even start this, right? One hip was down, one was up, and now I start my stretch. Now from here, what do I do? I have to step this way. So I'm automatically already splitting the floor. When I make my second step, inside the foot goes down, outside rolls, so what do I do? I split the floor. It's not a lot. I'm not bowing my knees or anything like that. I'm not uh, uh, fucking pronating, fucking whatever. God, I'm tired anyways. Okay. But I get that pressure. Now from here, what do I do? I get that pressure. I tend to lead with the pinky and the index finger. Kind of like a metal head and I'm painting a wall like this. But in reality, my power is here. It's generated from here on the forward line. On the outside line, it transfers from the bone marrow out to the blade edge. On the inside line, it transfers to the ridge hand. <laughs> okay? So, from here, I stretch out. And here's my low bonk style, okay? And how I stop my fall. If you notice, my energy, each hinge, even though I'm stretching, I'm going towards my opponent. Okay? So now I'm going to start my roll, press, and what am I doing here? I'm actually doing that extension, but I'm just not killing myself doing it. Okay? Now from here, same thing. Two, three. Okay? I'm breaking it down for you guys, okay? Again, same thing. I'm going to do the shift. Uh, let's do uh, the stuff first. Okay? I split the floor. Okay? I split the floor. Here's my elbow. So now I'm stretching. Here's that side elbow again. Great. Now I'm going to switch and compress. Okay? Same thing. Okay? Because this turns into that. Okay? So there's a lot of little strikes that people do not even understand because they don't fight. And Tai Chi has been, what is it now, 90 years before they had a war with any of guys wants to use it? There's five generations, nobody knows what the fuck they're doing anymore. Even the best guys, they have a quarter of a sign. A quarter. Because all these guys, these big famous guys, they're not, when I tell you, <laughs> they aren't touching the surface of what the old Tai Chi is. You know, they get the, the narcissistic freaking old, the magical power shit. There's no practical shit there. Okay? <laughs> the practical shit in Tai Chi is, you're going to attack me, I tear your fucking eyes out. <laughs> okay? That's Tai Chi. Okay? I put my, and you come to grab me, and I take my form, and I run it through your throat. That's called brushing, right? We're in a clinch. I'm not going to clinch you. If my hand is by your throat, I'm going to take this bone, and I'm going to run through your fucking throat, and then I'm going to hit you with this bone. Okay? That's called brushing. You get ground all the way through. Okay? But in order for me to get that understanding of the power, I have to have extension reflex and awareness on tracking. Okay, we've done this several times already. So here, 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 fine. So at any time, I can add that extension vibe or anything, right? But it's just right there, bam, bam. You actually probably can, I didn't want to say it, from right, from right here, uh, my buddy Luke's chaos flow guys. I was uh, working with them one day, <laughs> and he said to me, "No, with that kind of power, if you hit somebody in the sternum, they'll crack it like an egg." And I was like, "Oh yeah," <laughs> but we don't hit the sternum; we hit the solar plexus. I need the sternum because you know we want to smash your heart. <laughs> like literally, I want to punch you in the heart. So uh, that's another reason why I put the hand check in here is to protect your heart. It's not that most people really know that. But, uh, okay, so we're there, fine, we've got that extension, fine. So here again, spreading the floor, spreading the floor, stretching, 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 now I do my shift. Okay? So if that, I mean, I did this 20 years ago, but this is how I would look at the floor. Okay, I'd be saying, okay, fine, I'm here, here's my weight, okay, I'm stretching in, I'm pushing, I'm reaching out, here's my tuck, here's my check, turn my head separately from my body, <laughs> okay, then I step, now I spread the floor, I do my stretch, I stretch, I intercept, hit, hit, right? Now here, where do I go? Elbow. Okay. 
Now, in the form, let's just make the straight round, the round straight. I'm purposely angling these moves to unocclude them from you, to make them visible. Because if I do the form, you're not going to see anything. It just looks like I'm fucking raving. Okay? This isn't going to look like much to you. It's like, what is this? <laughs> what is that? But that's the idea, okay? So, let's just say we're going here. Now, the string version, which I would do, I, I, I would say to avoid a string version shape, is to do the form with a consistent pressure of this. Because I don't like to say the vibrator, because there's so many methods of this vibrating problem that I've seen that there's no, to me, right method anymore. There's this like family lineage methods. But the idea of what I'm explaining of this compression inside wave, getting that to stay throughout the whole form. Okay? If you have hypertension, okay, I. Okay? It's an undertaking. People are saying, let's not do Tai Chi. I don't give a shit. What I give a shit about is there's a hundred million people doing Tai Chi that couldn't fight their way out of a wet paper bag if someone gave them a baseball bat instructions. Okay? It just doesn't work. Okay? And these like famous Tai Chi guys, they have, they have these seminars to hundreds of people and they'll have like, you know, one to ten people that they'll teach the real stuff to. Because it's, it's okay to blow your mind. But the problem with them is none of them are real fighters. And I'll sell it to any of them, okay? I want to, I, not any of these guys that talk about the how to tie a cue. I want to see the battle scars, bro. I, like, yo, you meet me in real life and you look at me, you're going to know. All right? I've been working my life. I'm going to tell you right now. You may not be able to see on the video, but when you see me up close, you're going to say, holy shit, where the fuck is, okay? Everything's broken. All right? And there's fucking, like, 200 people in New York who will tell you, all right? Like, I was there, <laughs> okay? Y'all motherfuckers is bullshit. You're talking theoretical things. One guy, I, I, I don't want to say his name right now, because I don't know, he actually is really smart, really good, had his channel for a long time, like maybe 10, 12 years ago. And I saw him two years ago. And another one of these guys, like, the techniques don't matter. The techniques don't matter because you are fucking sparring turds. <laughs> You're sparring bums, geriatrics, and women, okay? And you outweigh them by 200 pounds. So when you have the basic mechanics now, the average person can't do anything because they don't have their feet. But well, once you get into a ring with anybody who has any of technique, you're fucked. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to see this all over the place. A lot of these guys, they play put and then they watch their feet. And they're doing, they lose their feet. And these are guys who are really good because they were never in street fights, okay? They didn't play sports, like really play sports. And when they compete, they compete in fucking form. They've never been in a fight. If they've been in two fights in their whole life, and now everything is theoretical or heard from this guy or in a book, I'm there, okay? That's why I say, I, I, I've been, and people from the Tai Chi community who know me in life know I've been humble. I can't be humble anymore. Because people are fucking trying to act like I'm not who I am. And that's pissing me the fuck off, okay? I, I busted my ass for this shit, and there's a bunch of fucking trolls and turns and posers acting like they're the real deal. I'm, I'm here right now, okay? So, and to set the thing straight, if anyone wants to say that my Tai Chi ain't real, test me, bro, <laughs> okay? Come, come, come get some, <laughs> okay? Other than that, shut your mouth, take a listen if you happy. So, <laughs> okay, so, Another thing would be going back to the power methods, right? So you have your complete oh, proxy this kind. Obviously, you have your square waveform, which is just be chamber action phase, or you know, chamber fire, chamber fire, chamber fire, chamber fire, chamber fire, chamber. See what I'm saying? So you turn the form into a square form. Now the form is very easy to see for strike one. Okay, so Ramsey Dewey. <laughs> okay? So 
you know, single whip is literally just, it's a punch this way, it's also a punch this way, it's also a hook hand, okay? <laughs> it's a lot of you okay? How long have we been on the stream? Because I don't want to give you guys too much information that people actually absorb. 35 minutes, that's pretty good. Alright. That's the three things I want to go over. Um, maybe next time we'll go, oh, I, I gotta, I mean, I'm just now starting to find people anywhere near me that are doing Tai Chi and I couldn't get out of the house. <laughs> I've moved five times in the last four years. Well, I, it's been freaking hell. <laughs> so this is like the, I, for me, COVID hasn't ended. I'm still in lockdown. I'm trying to get out. So hopefully, you know, the next couple of weeks, I'll find some people I can demo with. I can actually show you how the shit works again. But living in, like, the Herman Monk thing, you know, uh, it doesn't uh, lend to good video interaction. Okay. So, if anybody's in the chat, if you have any questions, now's the time. Let's start off in a second. Uh, okay. So, deciding on the striking service. What, what we're trained, though, is young. You're supposed to imagine a gray or black smoke figure exactly the same size as you. So if your stance is this low, that's where he is. Okay? You're a little bit practical. It's not about that. It's about teaching you to pick a target and aim at the target. If I can hit one target here, I can alternate with my eyes and move it. The problem is that people aren't precise. So when I come up for here, notice my elbow is either... I'm either aiming here, here, or here. That's it. That's all I'm going for. Okay? So as I'm stepping in, it doesn't look like much, right? But this is a straight ass post. I can literally stand on this. Okay? All day long. You're going to run into that with, if you weigh 200 pounds and you're moving at 20 miles an hour, and I weigh 200 pounds, and I'm moving at 20 miles an hour, and we meet at the same time, that's a lot of pain. Okay? It's a lot of pain. So, that's uh, the way to go about that. Uh, talk about the strike okay, fine. So, proper session dictated by this little point. So, if I'm thinking, what's the closest, the closest edge point or sphere I have to where he is, okay? Whatever it is. So if this is what's pointing at him, that's the attacking weapon, right? As I progress and I swivel, here is my little, little small elbow here, and then what am I doing? I'm rolling to this back fist or ox jaw, whatever you want to call it. That could be thrown to the solar plexus, it could be thrown to the throat, the nose, whatever you want to do, right? From, it's not just a block. There are no just blocks in Tai Chi. Even in classic karate, blocks are strikes and strikes are blocks. So if I was to show you like Sudan, right? This is a strike. When we block, we don't just shield. It's called the passive block. We actively block. So he's going to shield and make him, I'm going to attack him. So I'm going to do the same shielding motion I'm going to throw into it. Okay? So there's your surfaces. Here is my fingers. Okay, he's not right in the street that we're talking about. Because this... Okay? Because here, I'm in ward off, bro. This is ward off. It's a filling shot. So here's my ward off. Here's my... That is... That's my ward off. Okay? It's not a jab. It's a back fist flick. That can be used as a block or redirect. Okay? Going with the press. The back obviously. Going towards, single whip, depending on what your style is, it can't be too specific, because my style has, I have six different versions of single, single whip, and they all have slightly different things going on. Let's just say the Chen Man Chain version. Okay? What is my striking surface? Is it this? Or is it this? Or is it this? Okay? Yeah, I'll tell you what it is. It's actually this. Because in the original forms, I have said this a thousand times, there's always this coiling. 
Okay, so if I do the form, modern style form, let's do the modern style form in a sec, right? Okay? Here's what the return of the coiling action, okay? You see what I'm talking about? This, this silk reeling constantly, like butterfly knots, it's constantly going From this position, I get this under him. What am I going to do? I'm going to hit him with the uppercut, and then I'm going to hit him with the regular punch. That's kind of the way. There's this, there's this. Okay? Uh, obviously, when you're doing single whip, the first one is single whip, I'm going to hit him with the back end. Here. Okay? So from its backside until I start to rotate. Because I want to get this spiral line for all you fascia freaks, okay? The spiral line, I want to drill into this. Okay? So I want to drill into this. So the entire time, there's compression, and he's feeling he's in that wall. Unlike in karate, yes, we have the same structure, but our structure is based on uh, 2D, 2D linear coordinates. Okay? It's two-dimensional coordinates rather than three. So what tends to happen, there'll be a gap in the structure. Right? Whereas in Tai there is no gap. There's always stability. But where we go, you're feeling the ground. Alright, uh, I want to get to single one. Um, so let's play guitar. So, I, I don't know, I'll show my eyes now. When I do this play guitar move, it's a capture of the elbow, right? Most people just do this. It's not. It's stretch, grab, and what are you doing? That rotation. Because I want to seal or capture his sinew. And I do that by counter rotation. I stretch these tendons out, and I stretch it out the space between the elbow because it's very easy for me to manipulate. Okay? Same thing, once I get to this position, where am I? I'm in that same rollback pattern. So if my hand's at his wrist, and this hand's at his elbow, same motion as in rollback. Okay? Now I'm here, I step in, there's my elbow, there's my shoulder. Okay, fine. Most people don't notice this hand. Why is this hand here? Well, obviously, if I'm getting close to him, I have to cover my face. It's not just that. If I hit you with my shoulder and my elbow, I now have access. I now have access. Okay? That's what it's about. Uh, going to my uh, cringe right there. There is. I'm over exaggerating this, a drop force here. So it's actually, now, if you argue, if you watch the wave, it's this. Now, I'm obviously doing high, so I want you to see the wave. But I do it, man, I don't say anything. It's going to look like nothing, I'm hiding it. Over exaggerating? It's like super over exaggerated now, okay? <laughs> but that's the idea. So depending on where his body is, I have this, I have this, I have this, as a striking surface. Uh, brush knee, right? You cycle through striking surfaces. So here I have the blade, as I turn my wrist, now I have my reverse wrist hand, okay? Now I have my fingertips while using the blade, okay? Then I have my fang and my mouth in the fang. Okay, uh, let's do one more. Step up punch, and we'll wrap up with this. Let's, uh, from here. Here's another one. People, even when you're doing this modernized way, or you're doing the old way to turn, either way, you're still doing this foot split and opening your hips in this direction. That's what's really going to get you 
Uh, just want to avoid the knee injuries and that, 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 that issue people have with the foot turning. Because you're bumping, you're trying to do all this shit, so your knee's doing two different things. I want to spread the floor and then turn. There's a point in point five. Well, uh, uh, okay, here. When I step into this, what am I hitting with? Which knuckle should you hit with? Should you hit with the top two or the bottom three? So the answer is both. <laughs> the answer is both. On the way up, hit with the three. On the way down, hit with the two. Roll out. And there you go. Okay? I think that's enough of my, uh, my secrets for the day. It's 45. Perfect. Okay, guys. Questions, comments, accusations. Meet me in the Discord. Help me build the community before YouTube and pull us off. They're changing all the rules. Who knows how long this website even be around. So help us build the community. Get on Discord. I'll be doing uh, free seminars and stuff there, all kind of cool stuff. Got some really cool people there already. It's going to be great, right? I'm also going to be doing a book review for uh, a friend of ours on the Discord. Try to check it out. Maybe we'll give you a discount. All right, guys. Let's look. See you guys soon.